In 1993-94, Purdue Boilermaker basketball had two long and winning roads from preseason polls through Selection Sunday to Destination Final Four. Both teams were young and entered the season picked by the experts to finish near the middle of the Big Ten Conference. But both wound up winning Big Ten championships, the men outright and the women sharing with Penn State. Both teams earned number one seeds in the NCAA tournament, the first time ever that one school claimed a number one seed in both the men's and women's tournaments in the same year. Both teams were at their best toward the end of the season. The men won eight straight before bowing out of the tournament in the regional final against eventual runner-up Duke. The women won 10 straight before falling in the national semifinals to eventual champion North Carolina. Both teams finished with 29 and five records, the men matching their all-time single season victory total and the women establishing an all-time best. Both teams received significant individual recognition. Men's head coach Gene Cady was selected as co-coach of the year, while Glenn Robinson was a unanimous All-Big Ten and All-American selection. He swept up all of the Collegiate Player of the Year trophies and awards while leading the nation in scoring. Women's forward Leslie Johnson was All-Big Ten and an honorable mention All-American. She also was named the National Freshman Player of the Year. And both teams accomplished all this without a single senior in their starting lineups. First, let's examine Gene Cady's ball club. The Boilers shook up the basketball world and had the whole nation talking. Glenn Robinson and the sharpshooting Conzo Martin had led a strong supporting cast to a 26-4 record. The quartet of losses came by a grand total of only 12 points. This was a team to be reckoned with when the madness of March came. The reckoning would begin in Lexington, Kentucky's Rupp Arena. No 16th seed had ever upset a number one, and Purdue was not about to let Central Florida be the first. Waddell sent an airmail message on Purdue's first possession. Waddell wide open for a three, knocks it down outside. The bombing of Central Florida had begun. Glenn Robinson, Conzo Martin, and Link Garner joined Waddell in manning the first half siege guns. Stolen by Robinson. Robinson down, shoots right wing, and hits it. Robinson a three. Yes! Conzo shoot another three. Purdue held a comfortable lead at the end of the period. And then the big dog went to work, inside and out. Here's a steal by Stanback. Can't pick it up, finally does. Gives it to Waddell. Waddell a fire outside right. Bingo! Purdue cruised to a convincing 98-67 first round thumping. On Purdue's second round card was the staunch defending Alabama Crimson Tide, but perhaps no tide is high enough to stop Glenn Robinson. The big dog would not be denied, and neither would the pound puppies. The Boilers gave Bama a taste of its own medicine, sending forth swarming defense from the opening tip. Robinson's thundering play sent Purdue into the locker room, up nine at the half. But Bama came out swinging in the second frame. A 13-5 run gave the Tide the lead in minutes. But Robinson halted the surge at last and then turned it over to his teammates. 
Backdoor lob to Waddell. He's underneath with it. Put up the shot. Beautiful shot. Off for Purdue. A big possession for the Boilermakers. Porter in the lane. Right underneath. Put it up with a left hand. A beautiful drive down the lane. And it's good. Spirited reserve Herb Dove flexed Purdue's collective muscle and sealed the victory. Underneath the Dove. And he dunks. And he was fouled. Act on the play. No call. Waddell. The Dove. Another dunk for Dove. On this day, the basketball world learned that Purdue was much more than just Robinson. Alabama learned the hard way. Sometimes, though, Robinson alone would be enough. For those few who had yet to jump on the big dog bandwagon, Glenn Robinson's performance versus Kansas in the Southeast Regional Semifinal inspired mass conversions. The big dog had his day, scoring at will and carrying the Boilers to a two-point lead at the half by tallying 30 of his team's 44 points. Porter against the trap, sends in the corner. Now to go inside to Glenn. He stops, put it up, and dumps it right over Ostertag. Early in the second 20, Kansas mounted the run that everyone expected to see. 13 unanswered Jayhawk points left the Boilers in a hole. As if on cue, Purdue hero number two emerged. Conzo Martin let fly a few of his school record eight trays to break the Jayhawk surge. Shoot a three, good, and he was fouled, and the bucket turns. Oh, and they're bombing Martin on the Purdue bench, Larry. Wow. 65-54 Purdue, 12-41 to go in the game. By the T.J. Rafer, and then a steal by Martin. Martin down, all alone, lays it in. Waddell deep in the left corner, off to Martin. He spots up, shoots a three. Good. Purdue down with it, Waddell. Cross court to Martin, shoots another three. Good. And Robinson finished with a tournament high 44 points. Solid work from the free throw stripe put the game away, and Purdue advanced to the NCAA Elite Eight for the first time in the Gene Cady era. Purdue was now just one game away from a spot in the Final Four, but awaiting the Boilermakers was the team in college basketball you least want to meet in a regional final the Duke Blue Devils. Coach K's club hadn't lost a Final Four qualifier in the last seven tries. But they would have to muzzle the big dog if they wanted to make it eight. All-American Grant Hill drew the assignment, though it seemed that the entire team lent a hand. The strategy worked. Robinson was also slowed by a strained back suffered two nights earlier, and the rest of the team tried to take the torch. Makers after the Duke turnover. Shot in the corner by Martin, is good. A dribble deep on the right side. Porter looking, spins, comes in the lane, deals it underneath, and stand back, plays it in. Looks into the corner, Martin spots up, shoots a three, good! Back to Porter, Porter in the lane to Waddell, shoots a three-pointer off the run, good! 20 topsy-turvy minutes ended in a 32-32 tie. Duke got out quick in the second period and extended the lead to seven in minutes. The Blue Devils wouldn't let Robinson and Martin out of the doldrums, and they wouldn't let the Boilers climb back into the game. March through March ended a mere nine points short of the final four.
one slip could hardly blemish the accomplishments of this Purdue club. Glenn Robinson, universally accepted as the best in the college game, finished his junior year as the nation's top scorer and rewrote the Purdue record books. Along the way, he captured virtually every known National Player of the Year award. Conzo Martin led the team in three-pointers made and long-range accuracy. This after going 0 for 7 from beyond the arc before this season. But the greatest accomplishments were made as a team. Prior to the season, Purdue had barely made most top 25 lists and found itself picked as a middle-of-the-pack Big Ten entry. The Boilermakers, however, knew they had the ability assembled to go a long way. And they could hardly wait to get started, taking a summer tour through Europe that helped solidify the team's chemistry. After touring the old country in the summer, the Boilermakers continued their globetrotting with a season-opening visit to Anchorage and the Great Alaska Shootout, where they defeated Wisconsin Green Bay in the first round. Game two of the Great Alaska Shootout brought Weber State to Purdue's plate. And yes, the big dog ate well on a steady diet of Wildcat. Glenn Robinson's 28 points and 17 boards were devastating. Conzo Martin's 22 markers did plenty of damage as well. Purdue cruised into the final. The Boilers grounded the Portland Pilots in the featured championship game. Robinson, the tourney most viable player, played like a gremlin on the wing, throwing down 41 points and snaring 13 carrots. Martin closed out a solid three-game effort with 19 points and a spot on the all-tourney team. And Purdue called itself Great Alaska Shootout Champion. Purdue's homecoming met no end to early season tournament atmosphere. The first appearance of the Golden Black at Mac Arena was also round one of the Boilermaker Invitational and a meeting with James Madison, yet another foe destined for the NCAA championship field. Katie's young team would duke it out with James Madison. It was a quick knockout, though, with Robinson putting up 20 first-half points and Martin adding 10 to lead Purdue to a 17-point halftime lead. The Boiler defense tightened in the second period, and with the game well in hand, Coach Katie let Robinson and the reserves bring home the 98-74 win. But the James Madison runaway was merely a warm-up for the tourney final that would play out like a Purdue highlight film. The Boilers stampeded to the crown with a 94-54 romp over the Western Michigan Broncos. Reserves Herb Dove and Justin Jennings led a 13-3 Purdue run to finish the half and finish off Western Michigan. Bronco busting continued in the second frame. Seniors Link Darner and Ian Stamback and the rest of the bench corps joined in on the fun. <laughs> Purdue's pilgrimage to the Louisiana Superdome meant the toughest pre-conference test yet. The talented New Orleans privateers lay in wait for Robinson and company. Undotted by the big dog's big rep, New Orleans set the pace in the first half. Despite a two emotional Boilermaker runs to keep the game close, the Privateers led by seven at the half. Purdue's quick second half surge knotted the score at 42. The game was destined for overtime. Brandon Brantley's putback extended Purdue's lead to seven with seven minutes left, but it proved to be the last Boilermaker field goal in regulation. Robinson fouled out, 
But Matt Waddell scored five of Purdue's ten points in OT. And the Boilermakers escaped with a slim victory. Back home in Indiana, Purdue celebrated the Boilermaker blockbuster by making quick business of the Houston Cougars in Market Square Arena. For Glenn Robinson and Conzo Martin, it was just another day at the office. Justin Jennings delivered a knockout performance as the Boilers rolled. Georgia Southern trek north to the West Lafayette winner and the reception was cold indeed. The Boilermakers greeted their guests with a rain of threes. Four Purdue Bombardiers found the mark in the first half. By the time the Eagles could gather their wits, the damage was done. Purdue sailed to a 97-59 victory. Purdue next tested its unblemished record against Tennessee Chattanooga. The Moccasins fought to stay within six at the intermission, but Glenn Robinson's book in 18-point halves were too much for UTC. Big Dog had an answer for every comeback try. Purdue's sense of wonderlust returned after final exams, and the Boilermakers began yet another extended junket in Ogden, Utah, for a rematch with Weber State. The Purdue defense was tenacious, holding the Wildcat sharpshooters to five of 22 three-pointers and forcing 26 turnovers. Glenn Robinson was his huge self, delivering 31 points and 13 Bottom boards. Foster of Purdue, he comes out, sends it ahead to Waddell. Waddell pulls up and fires, he missed. And Robinson follows with a two-hand slam jam. Conzo Martin, Matt Waddell, and Herb Dove helped drive Purdue's 64-point second stance. Purdue's westward movement took the Boilermakers all the way to San Francisco to face the USF Dons. Purdue's main man wasted no time converting the Cow Palace into Mr. Robinson's neighborhood with 20 first half points. Whittling away a 20 point deficit, USF took the lead. But the Boilermakers refused to fold. And Matt Waddell was a key in Purdue's final run. After an unblemished pre-conference slate, it was time at last to separate the big dogs from the pups. Purdue's Big Ten Conference gauntlet began at Northwestern's Welsh Ryan Arena. The Wildcats, also unbeaten heading into conference play, provided a staunch test tying the game with just five minutes to play. But who was
who's there to save the day? Superman, of course. Takes the baseline. Stop, forces it up. Good! Baseline right. Eight seconds left. Glenn Robinson still held off the Wildcat charge. Robinson's 34-point conference debut sent a strong message to Big Ten foes who would search all season for a chink in his armor, or at the very least, a piece of kryptonite to slow him. Looking for the 13th straight win and the best produced start since 1911, the Boilermakers face Seton Hall from the Big East. It may have been an early break from Big Ten play, but it certainly wasn't a breather. The Hall's bruising style rivaled Big Ten banging. The Pirates reeled in Purdue's early run, and the lead seesawed all second half. Robinson hamstrung by Seton Hall's 1-3-1 zone, Matt Waddell's bombing and the hustle of the reserve corps saved the day. And the dog came up big in the clutch on the way to a 69-67 win. Though most teams decide to let the big dog eat and try to stop Purdue's other weapons, Michigan State came to shut down Glenn Robinson. And the Spartans fared pretty well, holding Purdue's big gun to a relatively low 25 points. But they didn't count on options two and three. Matt Waddell and Conzo Martin were hitting on all cylinders, combining for 35 points. Purdue had a 43-35 lead at the half, but Michigan State came storming back behind Sean Respert's sharp shooting. After seeing the lead slowly disappear, the Boilers put an end to the Spartan upset hopes with a 17-2 run over the next five minutes. Put up a shot, but Roberts was there to get the follow, put it in. Goes around Robinson, he stops, and Robinson just, just makes some eat leather on that shot as he blocks it. Full court pass to Waddell, back to Roberts. Roberts with it, he had a man open, that was Martin, didn't see him. Sends it over to Waddell, wide open, shoots a three. Yes, yes, yes! Pulls up out the Glenn, stops, takes the three, goes in the stand back, hooks it up and in! Stand back scores! Win number 14 was academic, and Purdue's best start ever was in the record books. But that's where it ended. Wisconsin employed the same logic as Michigan State in its first match with the Golden Black. Stop Robinson, and maybe you can derail the Boilermaker machine. This time, it worked. The big dog suffered through a nightmarish 15-point night. Conzo Martin and Matt Waddell picked up the slack admirably, but the Badgers thwarted every Purdue comeback. Roberts, Roberts puts it up and scores. All deep on the right side. To the corner to Martin. Squares up, shoots a three. Bingo! Break his team in desperate need of a hoop. Martin shoots a three. Bingo! Money is seven in this game. Conzo shoots a three-pointer. Got it! Winning streak was finished at 14. So it goes on the road in the Burley Big Ten. Things were not about to get any easier either. Bob Knight's eighth-ranked Indiana Hoosiers were next to invade Mackey Arena. The balanced Hoosier attack hammered out a 36-32 advantage at intermission. Things could have been worse for Purdue had it not been for a late run to close the gap with Roberts, Martin, Robinson, and Waddell making the push. Purdue 
fought back in the second half with Conzo Martin and the big dog putting up big points. changed 10 times in the second 20, dancing toward a dynamite finish and some Martin heroics. Boilermakers overpowered the Hoosiers in overtime. Robinson got Purdue the lead. And free throw shooting brought them home. After a week of heart stoppers, Purdue's first matchup against Ohio State provided an unexpected breather. Everything went Purdue's way, especially from beyond the three-point arc. Jennings sends it back to Conzo, shoots a three. Bingo! Bingo! Conzo Martin hit five of seven. And Matt Waddell knocks three of four from long range. Guns. Yes! Yes! Bingo! It was a day for fast breaks. Justin Jennings and Herb Dove provided the thrills, and the Mackey Maniacs joined in on the fun. Purdue ran away with it, 101 to 63. Whoa. A trip to Happy Valley is seldom happy for visiting football teams. And Big Ten basketball clubs are starting to rue the Nittany Lions' den as well. A pumped up Penn State squad came out firing, shooting better than 60% from the field and taking a 42-37 halftime lead. It could have been worse if not for Robinson, Waddell, and Martin coming through with big buckets. Purdue's perimeter game went colder than a Pennsylvania snowstorm in the second period, but a team effort brought Purdue back.
But Penn State kept its composure down the stretch, scored the last eight points. And rang up a 71-68 upset. An away day with Minnesota would hardly seem the antidote for the heartburn of such a road loss. But Purdue had no choice. Minnesota was ranked 17th in the land and rising. Moreover, the packed Williams Arena crowd had not seen a loss in 10 games. It was the blueprint for disaster. In the face of this adversity, Purdue plugged its way to a 41-38 halftime lead behind seven three-pointers. Oilers held the Gophers at bay, but never put them away. In the clutch, Purdue had to survive a free throw debacle to nose out the victory. Inbounding to Robinson, back to Conzo, sends it down court to Waddell. They got a man open, that's Porter Roberts, and he lays it up and in, and he's fouled from behind. It counts. The bucket is good, and it was fouled. Great, Great ball work by Purdue. And can you believe only six seconds went off the clock? He has to make the free throw or a three-pointer could send it to overtime. Missed it. Minnesota will have a chance to tie. He throws up a three-pointer. No good. Purdue rebounds. The game's over. Purdue wins. 75 to 75. A day that could have ended in disaster ended instead with a return to the Big Ten title chase. Purdue wins. The heat was far from off, though. Next up was a first look at the Chris Weberless Michigan Wolverines. While the five was now only four, it was still a fabulous group. But behind a pretty fab effort by Glenn Robinson, Purdue came out on top of a first half that saw 11 lead changes. Boilers were ready for more to start the second half. Things seemed to be well in hand when the Boilers led by 11 with just eight and a half minutes left. Then the bottom fell out. Michigan's charge was more than the Boilermakers could withstand. Purdue shots just wouldn't fall. And Jawan Howard pulled down 17 rebounds. Purdue still had a chance. But Michigan had an answer when Howard's shot was good with 21 seconds left. There was time for one more play, and the Boilermakers came ever so close. There was
was no rest for the weary. The Boilers traveled back to Iowa. Glenn Robinson and Conzo Martin came up big with 34 and 20 points respectively. Iowa made it interesting in the first half, but Purdue took control by the break. Iowa never found a way back into the game. The Boilers lit them up from the perimeter. After a bunch of close calls, a big win was just what Dr. Katie ordered, and visiting Northwestern was the hapless victim. Six Boilermakers scored in double figures, led by Robinson's 29. Conzo Martin added 17, Matt Waddell 12, Porter Roberts 11, and reserves Justin Jennings and Ian Stanback came through with 10 each. The first half was a slow burn. Robinson delivered the exclamation point on 20 minutes of domination for a 22-point lead at halftime. The second half was a lesson in lead maintenance. The Boilers cruised to the 98-81 victory. Purdue's return clash with Michigan State stood as a perfect example of Big Ten parity. Five and seven Spartans led by as many as 15 and still had a 43-37 lead at the half. But the Boilermakers collected themselves and mounted a 15-5 run early in the second stanza. It was the Robinson and Martin show to hang on. The big dog bagged 11 points down the stretch. And Waddell sank the final two of his 16 points to ice a narrow escape from East Lansing. The Boilers had a score to settle with visiting Wisconsin, and Glenn Robinson gladly shared the load with Matt Waddell and Ian Stanback. Wisconsin controlled early, but Brandon Brantley keyed a late run to give the Boilermakers some breathing room. They don't call them Badgers for nothing. Wisconsin drew ever closer as the final buzzer approached. Robinson had the answer again, scoring 13 of his team's final 17, preserved the 67-64 win. Ninth in the land, Purdue headed south for a rematch versus the Indiana Hoosiers. Bob Knight's club may have conceded to Robinson's 21-point first-half explosion, but they never gave in to the Boilermakers. 
A nip and tuck first half ended with the Hoosiers on top, 42 to 40. Stopping nearly everything but Robinson in the second half, Indiana brought itself some breathing room with six minutes to play. Then a quick run brought the Boilermakers to within one. Breaks went Indiana's way. Robinson's 39 point effort was not enough to salvage a win in Bloomington as the Hoosiers won by two. Big three were living large at Ohio State. It's a good thing. The Boilers needed every one of Glenn Robinson's 40 points, Conzo Martin's 25, and Matt Waddell's 14 to fend off a pesky Buckeye team. Struggling to keep close most of the game, Purdue's late burst extended a three-point lead to ten. Free throws and heady play finished the job. With Penn State in town, assistant coach Frank Kendrick reminded the Boilers about what had happened in the Lions' den. Final analysis, they may have cost you a ring. We won't know that until it's all over, but there's a damn good chance that they may have cost you a ring. But you got a chance to do something about it. You got a chance to get them back. And Gene Cady wanted his players ready for the stretch run with three of the final four games at home. Now let's use this as a, as a springboard, you guys, into the NCAA these next three out of four, or even four. I don't care about that. Don't think because we play three out of four, it's going to be easy. You think that, now you're soft. You're thinking soft. You've got to think. We've got to have this one if we're going to get better. That's the bottom line. That's a self-motivator. Let's go, let's go. Purdue seemed to have Penn State on the ropes when the Boilers pulled into a 42-26 lead in the first half.
But the Lions have plenty of heart, persistently chipping away at the lead. Penn State closed the gap to within one with six minutes to play. Then Robinson took over, scoring 12 of his 21 second half points down the stretch to win his team some elbow room. Minnesota's visit to West Lafayette promised another battle for the Boilermakers, but Purdue took the 18th ranked Golden Gophers to the mat quickly. Scoring duties were well distributed as the Boilermakers gradually pulled away in the first 20 minutes. The second half saw no break and Purdue's steady march toward the comfortable 16-point victory. The season, it seemed, would come down to the rematch against Michigan, which had stung the Boilermakers with a comeback win weeks earlier in West Lafayette. With only two games to play and the league lead on the line, it was payback time. And like so many big games before, the big dog was there in a big way. Robinson kicked off an early run that sprung Purdue to a quick lead. But momentum shifted as the Wolverines battle back to within two at the half. Riding the crest, Michigan extended its lead to 10 before Herb Dove and Glenn Robinson struck back. Glenn stops, shoots baseline left, misses again. Dove rebounds, put it in and was fouled. On Rose stops, had it stripped away. Stand back, got it back. Glenn shoots a three. Got it! A beauty deep on the right side. With time running out, Michigan still led 92 to 84. A pair of Matt Waddell bombs and the big dogs banging set up a fantastic finish. Off the Glenn, drives inside, open, and he dumps, and he was fouled by King! With the biggest game of the season hanging in the balance, everyone knew who would get the ball. Big time for the big dog, and he delivered. Sends it in to Glenn against the double team. He comes down, he stops, he spins, he fires, he hits! But a timeout called with just 6.5 seconds left. in the backboard to Rose. Rose down with the ball. At the timeline to Dugan. Five fires off the run. It's up there. It's no good. And the reload no good. Purdue wins it. Purdue wins it. The Boilermakers steal one from Michigan. Purdue had erased a seven-point deficit in the final 80 seconds. After Michigan dropped its last conference game, a Purdue win in the final regular season contest versus Illinois would ensure sole ownership of the Big Ten title. That was all the motivation the Boilermakers needed. Robinson took matters into his own hands. 
heeding Coach Katie's pregame call for his team to be ornery, the Big Dog nailed down 17 points to speed Purdue to a 40-34 halftime lead. His first half was but a warm-up. The second was beyond compare. With Illinois charging, Robinson's three turned the tie. Ten Robinson points later, the charge was squelched. Later in the half, Robinson edited his own highlight film to finish with a career-high 49 points. Bob into Glenn's open, put up the shot, oh! and it's a foul! Oh! What a shot by Glenn Robinson! Oh! the ball over to Darner. Darner rolls and it in. Dust had settled. And Williams, Purdue stood alone atop the Big Ten. Yeah, deep on the right side. Pulls up. Fires. No good. It's over. And we present the Purdue. Ranked third nationally in the Associated Press Bowl, the Boilermakers capture the conference because of relentless teamwork and a knack for winning many of the close calls they face. And as Illinois learned the hard way, Purdue is on top because of Glenn Robinson, the best player in the Big Ten, the best player in the nation. It was a time for celebration and plenty of happy faces. Meanwhile, Lynn Dunn's Boilermakers were trying to find their identity. Like the men's team, they were young, but had matured through off-season strength and conditioning. And like the men, two early season tournaments would help provide confidence. A trip to Chicago for the Coopers and Lie Brand Invitational put the Boilermakers up against a pair of tournament-tested participants. Purdue was impressive in beating San Diego State and host DePaul behind the sharp shooting of sophomore forward Tanya Kirk. The tournament MVP took game scoring honors in both contests, totaling 45 points and making 20 of 33 shots from the floor. Freshman power forward Leslie Johnson burst onto the scene with 14 points in each of her first two college games. Next came a trip to Nashville, Tennessee for the Vanderbilt Classic. Purdue's front line game again was dominant as Johnson teamed with sophomore center Stacy Lovelace for 44 points to blow away Loyola of Maryland in game one. But the real boost of confidence may have come in defeat. Playing in the championship game against number five ranked Vanderbilt on the Commodore's home court, the Boilermakers fell behind by 19 points in the second half, only to explode for 53 in the final 14 and a half minutes and nearly pull out the victory. Leslie Johnson scored a Purdue freshman record 34 points, with another first year player, Danielle McCulley, notching 18. The home opener against Notre Dame brought out a crowd of nearly 7,000. 
The Irish scored first, but Purdue held the lead through the final 38 minutes, despite committing 28 turnovers. An 11-point halftime margin was trimmed to one in the final two minutes before the home team tallied the last six points to hold on for the win. A couple of laughers came next for Coach Dunn's Bombers. Playing in the first game of the Boilermaker Blockbuster at Market Square Arena in Indianapolis, Purdue pummeled Louisville early. With Tanya Kirk going six for seven, including three three-pointers, the team in gold romped to a 26-2 lead barely eight minutes into the game. The score expanded to 44-6 after 14 minutes on the way to a 57-20 halftime lead. The Boilers made eight of 11 three-pointers and all 11 Purdue players scored as the Boilermakers coasted to victory. Less than 18 hours later, all 11 Boilers again scored as Indiana State succumbed to Purdue's interior power. Leslie Johnson had 27 points, Tanya Kurt 19, and Stacy Lovelace 16 en route to a 102-58 triumph in the Big Four Classic in Mackey Arena. A pre-Christmas junket to Puerto Rico provided the Boilermakers with some fun, relaxation, and three games, including a resounding exhibition win over the Puerto Rican national team, an eight-point loss to Mississippi, and a nine-point victory over DePaul. After Christmas, defense came to the forefront as Purdue held each of its next five opponents under 60 points. A home game with Butler showcased two of America's best freshmen. Guard Janon Rowland stepped off the bench and scored 22 points, while Leslie Johnson had 21 with nine rebounds, and junior guard Jennifer Jacoby dished off eight assists. Another easy victory at Bradley two nights later improved the Boilermakers' pre-conference record to nine and two. Big Ten play started at home for the Boilermakers as they entertained Michigan and Michigan State within a three-day span. Baby Bart's Big Ten debut was overpowering. Leslie Johnson accumulated 25 points and 12 rebounds against the Wolverines and 23 points and 13 rebounds against the Spartans. Purdue won big twice and Johnson was named Big Ten Player of the Week. Mid-season credibility was the goal to be achieved from a road trip to Ohio State and Penn State. Against the Buckeyes, Purdue took control early with 15 straight points behind the sharp shooting of Leslie Johnson and Janon Rowland. Stacey Lovelace joined the act in the second half as Purdue expanded its five-point halftime lead to the final margin of 76-52. Johnson ended with 21 points, Lovelace had 14 points and 13 rebounds. Although Purdue then lost to Penn State, shooting one free throw to the host's 29, the Boilermakers came home knowing they could play with the nation's best, a confidence boost that would prove valuable just a few weeks later. Back home again in Mackey Arena, Dunn's women methodically disposed of Minnesota, holding the eventual conference scoring queen, Carol Ann Shudlick, to 16 points, eight below her average. Meanwhile, Leslie Johnson was pacing the Boilers with 20 points and nine rebounds. Purdue out-rebounded the Gophers by 12. Rebounding was a huge factor again at Northwestern, where the Boilermakers out-rebounded the Wildcats 55-30 and placed all five starters in double-figure scoring, led by Johnson's 16. Leslie Johnson's double-double, 21 points and 12 rebounds, powered Purdue past Illinois on a Sunday afternoon in late January. Four other Boilers scored 10 points or more, and John Rowland picked up eight assists. Next up was the 13-3 Hoosiers in Bloomington, a game touted as strength versus finesse, inside power versus outside marksmanship. Purdue wasted little time in showing who was boss. The Boilers went inside early and often, piling up an 11-0 lead in the first four minutes and maintaining a comfortable lead throughout. Purdue dominated the boards 49-21 and held the Hoosiers to just one three-pointer in eight tries. Leslie Johnson had 15 rebounds and 15 points, and Stacy Lovelace led the scoring with 24 points. 
Two days later, a 77-64 victory at Wisconsin pushed Purdue's record to 17-3 overall and 8-1 midway through the Big Ten. That set up one of the biggest games in Purdue women's basketball history. Almost 10,000 fans paid to see the Boilermakers take on top-ranked Penn State with its glittering record of 18-0 overall, 9-0 in Big Ten. The 11th-ranked Boilers spotted the Nittany Lions an 8-2 lead after four-plus minutes, but Purdue battled back behind Cindy Lamping and forged a 13-point halftime lead. Penn State then scored the first 12 points of the second half to close the gap to one, but could never regain the lead. Roland led a balanced scoring attack with 12 points. A clutch basket by Lamping with 32 seconds remaining clinched the victory and moved Purdue into a tie for first place. The Buckeyes of Ohio State came calling two days later and found the Boilers in no mood for a letdown. With Tanya Kirk scoring 10 points in the first half, Purdue pulled away steadily to a 10-point halftime lead and breezed to a 21-point win. Leslie Johnson finished with 24 points and 13 rebounds en route to another Big Ten Player of the Week honor. The seven-game winning streak came to an end in Iowa City when 11th-ranked Iowa used intense defense to stifle the ninth-ranked Boilermakers. Purdue was held to a season-low 30% field goal percentage. Freshman Janon Rowland led the Boilers with 20 points. Now a game back in the standings, Purdue traveled on to Minnesota in desperate need of a victory. The talented Gophers had other ideas and appeared well on their way, holding an 11-point lead with 11 and a half minutes to go. But for use depth and Jennifer Jacoby's birthday heroics turned things around. The Boilers outscored the home team 29-10 over the last 11 minutes to earn a crucial win. Jacoby netted six of seven three-point attempts and tallied a career-high 23 points. Next up was a home game with Northwestern. Baby Bart took advantage of the Wildcats' thin interior to score 32 points. Purdue was in command most of the way and walked away with a 76-61 win. March rolled around, and the Boilermakers were playing their best ball of the year. Purdue was absolutely devastating. Beginning with a rout of arch-rival Indiana on March 2nd, the Boilers won eight consecutive games in March by an average margin of 33 and a half points. The Hoosiers' ideas of pulling off an upset were squelched early in the second half when a run of 15 straight points, eight by Stacy Lovelace, turned an eight-point halftime lead into a 50-27 Purdue advantage. Lovelace finished with 11 points while Janon Rowland added 23, including three of three from three-point range, and Leslie Johnson added 19 points. Thanks to a Penn State loss, Purdue's win over Wisconsin on March 6th moved the Boilermakers back into a share of first place, and the Boilers left no doubt they meant business. 25 steals and a 59.7% shooting clip buried the Badgers. Leslie Johnson's 19 points and 10 rebounds led a balanced attack. 
A 19-point victory at Michigan State on the first leg of a season-ending road trip set up the Boilermakers for a chance to secure at least a share of the Big Ten championship. After spotting Michigan a 10-3 lead, the Boilermakers scored 13 straight, six by Stacy Lovelace, and never looked back. Purdue's margin was 51-28 by halftime. All 11 Boilermakers scored during the first 10 minutes of the second half as Purdue blew the game wide open, 85-35. Six Boilers reached double figures, led by Leslie Johnson's 23 points and 13 rebounds. It was her 13th double-double of the season. The 110-51 route of the last place Wolverines spurred a small celebration in Ann Arbor after the game followed by a bigger celebration the next day in Mackey Arena when the Boilermakers received their Big Ten trophy. Selection Sunday found the Boilermakers celebrating their selection as number one seed in the NCAA Tournament West Region. Purdue's first three games in the tournament were blowouts. In Mackey Arena, the Boilermakers never trailed in crushing number 16 seed Radford. All 11 Boilermakers played a minimum of 11 minutes each. Each player scored, six of them in double figures, led by Leslie Johnson's 18. Purdue totaled 21 steals and 58 rebounds. Purdue's next tournament game was also at home and also a blitz. Purdue dominated number 18 Washington, the number eight seed in the region. The Boilermakers controlled the middle, outscoring the Huskies 60-20 in the paint. Leslie Johnson had 20 points to lead five Boilers in double figures. Cindy Lamping had a team high eight rebounds and nine assists. The win gave Purdue a perfect 14-0 record at home for the season. The results were much the same as the scene shifted to Maples Pavilion on the campus of Stanford University for the West Regional semifinals and final. Boilermaker route of Texas A&M set up a showdown between the number one and number two seeds in the West Regional. With Jennifer Jacoby playing the floor game of her life and scoring 20 points, the Boilermakers took advantage of the homestanding Cardinal and led at halftime 32-25. The Boilermakers withstood a rush midway through the second half, then it came to free throws, and Purdue made 17 of 18 down the stretch for a final margin of 82-65. It was Stanford's worst home loss in eight years and just their fourth defeat in the last 112 home games. It also earned Purdue its first ever trip to the women's Final Four. The march through March was history. It was grand and glorious, but when you're still playing basketball and the month is April, the competition gets keen. Purdue found that out on April 2nd in the national semifinals in Richmond, Virginia. Playing number four rated North Carolina, the eventual national champion, was the toughest assignment of the year. The Tar Heels' quickness led to numerous turnovers as the Boilers fell behind by 13 in the first half. However, Janon Rowland and Melina Griffin came off the bench to spark a Purdue rally and trimmed the deficit to just two, 39-37 at the half. The Boilers had a run of eight straight points and went ahead 47-45 on a layup by Stacy Lovelace about three minutes into the half. Foul trouble and more Purdue turnovers, however, proved costly during North Carolina's 20-3 explosion over the next six and a half minutes. Purdue had met its match. Speed, size, experience, North Carolina had it all. Steamrolling was over for 1994. But the theme was set for the next season. This time last year, I told you that we would have three of our top rebounders back, three of our top scorers. Well, this year I can tell you this, We'll have all of our rebounders back, and all of our scorers back, and all of our players back. I don't think there's ever been a team in NCAA and women's basketball that's won a Big Ten Conference Championship and then gone to the Final Four without any seniors. So obviously this is a very unique group. We're gonna go after it all, and we want you to go with us. We also know that it's gonna be tremendously challenging. 
But I truly believe that the impossible is what no one can do until someone does it. And why not us? See you next year. Thanks. and color of the 1994 NCAA Women's Final Four by ordering this year's official souvenir program. The 112-page magazine is loaded with team information, NCAA records, past champions, and all the excitement that surrounds America's fastest-growing sporting event. For your copy, send $8 to 1994 Final Four Programs, 3342 Melrose Avenue Northwest, Roanoke, Virginia, 24017. Please allow four to six weeks for delivery. This message provided by the NCAA.